Hello everyone, and welcome to another student-produced Reading Through History video in the story of the North American fur trade. My name is Allison Norton, and I am a junior enrolled in Mr. Peter Piconi's 2020-2021 AP U.S. History course at San Marino High School, and today I will be explaining why this riveting piece of American history is so important and what it's all about. In a sentence, the North American fur trade was both an industry and activity pertaining to the acquisition, exchange, and sale of animal furs in the colonial period of North America. Though the story of the North American fur trade involved much mention of Europeans, to best understand the story of the fur trade, we must go back before the arrival of Europeans in 1492. North America then was dominated by Native Americans who migrated and settled across the vast expanse of the continent over time, and developed distinct and increasingly complex societies by adapting to and transforming their diverse environments. One way in which the Native Americans living around the Ohio River, Mississippi River, Hudson River, and Great Lakes adapted to their environment was by partaking in fur trade. A good example of this is the fur trade that took place between the Aboriginal peoples of Canada and the Native Americans of the United States. However, contact in 1492 between Europeans, Native Americans, and Africans resulted in the Columbian Exchange and significant social, cultural, and political changes on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. When Europeans, specifically the Spanish, French, Dutch, and English, first arrived in North America, they had varying economic and imperial goals involving land and labor that shaped the social and political development of their colonies, as well as their relationships with Native Americans. While the Spanish and English sought precious metals such as gold and silver, economic and military competition, and the spread of Christianity, the French and the Dutch took up the fur trade and became the main European players. During this period, furs, particularly beaver furs, were a fashionable status symbol and represented wealth and prestige in Europe. High demand in items such as beaver fur hats resulted in the near extinction of Europe's beaver population by 1500, forcing traders to come to what is now the United States and Canada for pelts. Most of these felt hats were made of beaver pelts, however, other animals such as the ermine, muskrats, raccoons, buffalo, and foxes were also hunted for their fur. Europeans viewed North America as a land of opportunity with vast natural resources, including these fur-bearing animals. By 1515, the fur trade was rampant throughout the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence regions of the northeastern American Midwest in Canada. French explorers made alliances with the tribes in these regions, such as the Algonquins, Montagnais, and Hurons, to gain access to fur-rich territories. In exchange for furs, American Indian nations received goods such as metal tools, metal jewelry and adornments, and cooking utensils, which were more durable, efficient, and overall easier to use than the bone and stone tools they produced. By 1640, beaver populations were hunted to near extinction in the Iroquois territories, forcing them to travel elsewhere to acquire furs. This led to increased conflict among American Indian tribes as competition increased for furs in relationships with European allies. In addition, European settlers encroached on indigenous tribes' land as they moved west looking for new animal populations. The Iroquois moved west for furs as well, and began a campaign referred to as the Beaver Wars, during which they fought other American Indian tribes for access to their land. In the mid-1700s, the land west of the Appalachian Mountains was forested. Native Americans lived there in villages, and French and British traders moved through the area. Colonial rivalry intensified between Britain and France at this time, as the growing population of the British colonies expanded into the interior of North America, threatening French-Indian trade networks and the natives' autonomy. The competition among British, French, and indigenous people for economic and political advantage in North America culminated in the Seven Years' War otherwise known as the French and Indian War. The indigenous people, the British, and the French all had their own reasons for wanting to control the land. About 3,000 to 4,000 indigenous people 
were living in the upper Ohio River Valley at the start of the French and Indian War. Their goal was to keep their land, their way of life, and control over their future. By this time, they were using guns, gunpowder, knives, lead for musket balls, and cloth. So even though the Europeans encroached on their land, they had developed a dependency on European goods, so trade continued. In terms of the French, their colonial economy was based on trade with Native Americans. Because they depended on the North American fur trade, they saw the indigenous people as partners and allies. To reach the French settlements and to reach Native American towns, the French used the rivers. The French wanted to control the trade in the Ohio River Valley and needed the indigenous people living there to be their allies. Unlike the British, the French did not plan to settle in the Ohio River Valley. But they did want their priests and traders to be able to move freely through the area. At the start of the French and Indian War, the British colonies had a strong economy based on farming. So as the population grew, colonists wanted more farmland. Most of the farmland in the settled parts of the colonies was already taken, and so the best option for new farmland was settling in the Ohio River Valley. Traders from Pennsylvania were also already trading with the indigenous people in the Ohio River Valley. They were successful in the fur trade and wanted to continue trading with the indigenous people there. So neither the farmers nor the traders wanted to see the French in control of the Ohio River Valley. Ultimately, Britain defeated France and allied indigenous people, but due to the proclamation of 1763, the English colonists could not take over the land they won. However, British fur companies such as the Hudson's Bay Company and American Fur Company did continue trade in this region. A notable man who worked for the American Fur Company at this time and who had unique ties to both the world of the Native American and the world of the European fur trader was a man named George Bonga, a translator and guide of African-American and Ojibwe descent. His unique position allowed him to broker deals with American and Ojibwe traders because he studied in Quebec. He knew English, French, and Ojibwe. He often advocated for the Ojibwe by writing letters to the state government about other Native Americans and European men who mistreated the Ojibwe. At this point, the end of the North American fur trade had begun, as the severe decline in population of fur-bearing animals made it increasingly difficult for hunters and trappers to collect furs. Furthermore, in Europe and America, silk hats were quickly overtaking felt hats in popularity. In the 1830s, the founder of the largest fur company, the American Fur Company, began splitting up his company, and by 1842, it was no more. The previously mentioned George Bonga continued to trade furs and opened a lodge with his family, but by the 1870s, fur trading as a whole had largely ended. All in all, the North American fur trade left many short and long-term effects on the Western world. In the short term, it stimulated the economy in the colonies and encouraged relationships between the Native Americans and Europeans. Unfortunately, the trade also had severely negative impacts on the environment. Due to overhunting, the population of animals such as beavers and bison plunged, and to this day, still have not gone all the way back up. Vegetation and other animals that relied on a specific population of beavers and bison were also negatively affected. The fur trade also resulted in many long-term effects that negatively impact Native American people throughout North America such as starvation due to severely depleted resources, dependence on European goods, and the introduction of alcohol, which is often exchanged for furs. Many Native Americans were also plunged into long-term poverty and consequently lost much of the political influence they once had. Thank you for watching this video on the North American fur trade. I hope you learned something new and we wish you luck in your AP US history course.